talked for the first time this week, right? Yes, we did. All right. So just hola. say I want you to hear your voice. Say hello, Tom, or hello, say something. Hello, Tom. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Lydia, you're doing great so far. <clears throat> this is Tom Duty, middle-aged American living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would type Howdy Duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search for my site. Now, Lydia, this is <clears throat> the software we're using is called uh, Google Hangouts, and it's designed to flip back and forth automatically. When I talk, it shows me. When you talk, it shows you. Given our format today, I'm training the camera on your webcam so it will be exclusively you or whomever follows you okay uh, so uh, Lydia this uh, this is <clears throat> this is something I've wanted to do for a while and Adam's dental injury has made me uh, uh, present the idea to him today and it made it easy for him to accept mm -hmm. so Lydia, I'm going to uh, start with these uh, seven uh, Google searches. So, <clears throat> Lydia, first, just say how long you've been on Adam's staff. I've been with Adam's staff since, I can say, October, the end of October. So, October, so about three okay. months now. And what kind of things are you doing? How much do you know about this business? I know a lot about the business. I know that Adam took over the business just recently, and I do a lot of clerical work of what Suzanne does and I also do the back end work where I make sure clients have their payments up to date, payments are being processed, um, information is correct on the software. We, I'll go sometimes I'll go ahead and send over send information over to Global to make sure that everything matches up on what we have on the system and what is presented in Global. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go towards managing clients in a few in a few weeks as soon as we get our new office I'll be going I'll be going ahead and making phone calls as I am now steadily making a little bit of phone calls here and there but um, the longer I'm here the more phone calls I'll start to make and the more I'll be on the other end where I'm handling clients um, payments and calling clients directly to make sure payments have been okay yeah. so let me ask you this you, you take a job and you learn tasks you you said okay here's the computer and do this and when the client calls and they want this number this is where mm -hmm. you find it you know you learn how to do things mm -hmm. uh, it, it by your answer it sounds clear to me that you in addition to doing things you have begun to understand this operation you have mm -hmm. begun to understand what a service this business is providing to mm -hmm. consumers what their situation is and how it fits am, mm -hmm. am I right you you yeah. seem to get it Yes, and it's all a process. I mean, you can't just do one part of the job without knowing the other part. So my whole focus is knowing all aspects of this job. Okay, all right. <laughs> Lydia, let me, you just said you can't do one part of the job without understanding. This is what I was getting from you. You, you, seem, to, um, you seem to understand that clearly, but be sure that not everyone does. A lot of people just yeah. tell me what to do. So, so this is great, <laughs> and it, it's a, sort of a window into why Adam hired you. I sense mm -hmm. this very early on with you. Mm -hmm. So uh, Lydia, with that said, tell me what is this operation? What is the business of Adam Strom? What does Financial Rescuers do? The business of Adam, Adam Strom and Financial Rescuers is to help clients pay off their debt by understanding their situation, taking into, into consideration what they have available for us to work with, um, getting them on a payment plan, and being able to get their credit back to normal. Awesome. So, what kind of there's a there's a phrase? Uh, if our service meet your needs, what mm -hmm. what situation would describe a yes? Come call us if your if your if our services meet your needs. What would be a situation where a person would be saying yes to that? My needs match your services. We are very flexible with our clients, um, as you may be aware. If a client is unable to make a payment or is having little slipbacks, we go ahead and try to work with them to help them out. So say for instance, I was a client and I came in and I had about, a, just for example, $1,500 in debt with a computer company. I bought a computer, never paid it. Um, they'll come and work with me 
take take in consideration my situation if I'm unemployed, if I'm not working, um, if I have no income, if I am on welfare, they'll take into consideration what you're going through. And when they go ahead and call the, the people who are, you are in debt with, they'll go ahead and present those aspects to help you try to find a, a, medi a medium between what you can pay and what you have available. Okay, cool. So, uh, Lydia, uh, you you know about the disclaimers, the cautions, the mm -hmm. the things that people are warned about. Mm -hmm. So you know there are some risks in doing this. Um, you also understand that that uh, people uh, let's let's face it, Lydia, you hadn't done work like this before, right? No, this is my first. Time okay, ever. so. Lydia, I'm talking to you. You sound highly competent. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 a lot of people might say, "Why do I need a professional if Lydia can learn to do this in, you know, a handful of months? Uh, why can't I just click on 20 YouTube videos and do it myself? What risk are they taking if they do that? And would you advise them to do it or not to do it? I would not advise them to do it because nothing is sure. Working with us, we have all the legal representation that we need to make sure that all these payments get paid and making sure that you're on the correct payment plan, making sure that we fit your needs. Be you, if someone, if an individual were to go do this by themselves, I can't guarantee that they would get the best, the best resolution for the issue. So okay. we're the best, we provide the best resolution, at least we try. And we work hard to try to meet your needs. So when we talk all to right. Lydia, for the benefit of our listeners, I'm going to answer the same question that you just answered. Mm -hmm. Okay? The, the idea is that everybody knows that delinquent debt, if it's not paid as agreed, the value of that debt goes down. Mm -hmm. So now they have the opportunity to pay their debt at a reduced price. This is a great deal. Now the problem is if it goes too far, then they get sued, and then the price essentially goes right back up to what it was before it started to decline. That is a, uh, uh, a situation that George Tedros, the attorney, Adam Strom, and others are experienced and trained uh, to be able to prevent. Is that in addition to that, this is something you would imagine the, the consumers without proper training, the consumers who aren't professionals, might, might not be as skilled in predicting that sweet spot when they should make their credit or an offer. Does this make sense with what you know in the office? Yes, that is exactly right. That is exactly right. Uh, our, on our end, the people that are here are very skilled and trained and they've been doing this work for a while. So they know the ins and outs. As an individual, just trying to look this information up on YouTube and trying to go ahead and contact me, um, your editor just it won't be the same as if we were to do it. We know, we know the time to contact them. We know how many times to do it. We know what to say. You know, we know how to. We know how to present the situation in order for you to get the best deal. Okay. All right. Now, Lydia, uh, I'm going to do. Uh, this is actually simpler than I imagined it. I've got seven different Bing searches. Now I have a very small. Email, uh, internet marketing campaign so I've got seven searches that have been sent to me and I'm just going to give you one of them uh, the third one uh, says in other words this person I don't know who it is he or she typed into Bing Bing is like Google typed into Bing when is the best time to renegotiate credit card debts he or she was doing a search to, to try to understand that point and I'm going to repeat it when is the best time to renegotiate credit card debt is that someone you think he or she is looking for some information do you think that person would find a conversation with you or a fellow professional in your office satisfying would it help him or her uh, answer the questions he or she might have when when this search was uh, created um, if I'm not mistaken, are you asking me if they called into the office, would we be able to help them out um, with this yeah. question? Okay. Yeah, this is how they started out. They say, well, you know, when when is the best time to negotiate credit card debt? How would you start with that person? I would just tell them it depends on, depends on your debt. It depends on the company. Um, it depends on when the debt was collected. So when uh -huh. when it was brought to, brought to your attention. Um, 
what what was the debt for it just you can't really say a direct answer you got to take into consideration all the properties from their debt and put it into one to figure out the best time to contact right 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 it, lydia this is absolutely perfect it's leading exactly where i wanted to get out of these because mm -hmm. if i were to read all seven of them and i'd, I'd ask if it, you let me email these to you or just mm -hmm. ask them ask to get them from adam uh the seven of them a couple of them are people who seem to be asking more advanced questions. In other words, they're not just typing credit card debt, they're typing more specific questions as if they're going to try to do it themselves. And you know, the answer you just gave, I'm not sure you realize it, but the answer you just gave is it's very situational and mm -hmm. to do it oneself uh, uh, comes with some inherent risk. It used to be easier. It did. And, yeah. Say more, Lydia. It, it did. How did you know that's true? You haven't been around that long. How do you know mm -hmm. it used to be easier? I could tell based on um, how the clients react when we give them a call. They're just some of the clients that we take are just unsure of the whole process and they're not aware of the rules and regulations that are set when you're handling debt. So when yeah, we call, yeah. they think it's as simple as, oh, just give them the money, call it a day. But in reality, <laughs> it's a it's a process that you have to go through to ensure that you yourself are able to even make those payments. Because clearly right. you were in the debt because you didn't make those payments. So now working with us, we got to ensure that you're able to keep up. And we do help you keep up. All right. So, Lydia, this has been great. I, I've, I've I lost track of time, but it's been about 15 <laughs> or 20 minutes, I think. So um, I, you, 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 you kind of understand what we're doing. This is, uh, goes on to the Internet. You know, anyone could listen to it. However, I'm spending a little bit of money to see that people who ask the kinds of questions of Bing uh, are coming to us at, and they represent a, a growing part of our audience. Mm -hmm. So with with knowing a little bit about, you know, they're just any random clickers on the internet. In addition to that, we're trying to get more of these people who actually have this problem. So knowing uh, the audience, as I just described it, what else would you want to say before you say, ciao, Tomas? <laughs> I would just like to say that this is a great company to be involved with. We we work we do our hardest to work with the individual and their situation. We take into consideration the, the setbacks that they have, the withdrawals that they may have, um, and we work to make sure that their needs are met. So it's not yeah. you would think a company is just to make profit, but in reality we're here to help you as well. All right, all right, fantastic. But it's just great. Yeah. So um, I can you just tell the boss that I can end if he wants to or he wants to send someone else in, that's fine. It's up to him. Okay, I'll go ahead and go. All right, ciao. Thanks, ciao. Lydia. Ciao, 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 ciao. Thomas? Yes. John will be coming to talk to you. Robert is busy at the moment, but Tom will, uh, John will be here in, a, in one moment. Okay. Off camera, sir. Sorry, the headset in front of the computer, and I'll be on. Cool. <laughs> hey, Tom, how you doing? Good. Uh, John, I, I, I heard you're off camera. You prefer not to be on the camera, right? Um, today, I prefer. I, normally, it wouldn't be a big deal, but today, just I was in a hurry this morning, so I'm not looking my best, and I'm a little vain. All right. So, uh, we're, John, we're all a little vain. <laughs> Some of us admit to being extremely vain, but uh, I don't, you know everyone's a little bit vain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to my camera, so you can you can take it back so that you can see the screen. You'll be able to see my end, because what we're looking at is the ceiling of your 
office, and so now we're looking at uh, the Sony building in Manhattan. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, John, this is uh, uh, John. Do you know who I am? Oh yeah. So Adam has explained okay. your, your your role in the whole process here. All right. So uh, this is credit card debt talk. Uh, mm -hmm. I've wanted to do this for a while. Involve other voices. Uh, I know from my own. I guess just sense, uh, but it's it's clearly confirmed by internet click history data again and again that unscripted conversation is uh, more interesting than scripted and uh, multiple voices is also additionally uh, more interesting. So I've wanted to do this for a while and it just happens that Adam's dental injury kind of made today the day. I proposed it, he said yes, and so here we are. So gotcha. I forgot... I forgot to tell Lydia this, so if you, I'm going to tell you, and if you'd try to remember to tell Lydia, uh, this this uh, is Google Hangouts. Uh, this is Google Hangouts. So w as soon as I click Stop Broadcast, when we're done, and I get the sense Robert's not going to come on, so it's just going to be you're going to be the final one. When I click Done, uh, Google automatically does a little additional processing, and in about five or ten minutes, it puts it on my YouTube channel. So all you have to do is remember how to spell my name, uh, Tom Duty. Type it into Google, navigate to my YouTube channel, and you'll be able to find the recorded conversation with Lydia and I, and then the recorded conversation that you and I are beginning now. Oh wow, great! Okay, so again, it's uh, T O M, and my last name begins with a D, like Delta. It's D O O D Y. And that will allow you to Google search, you navigate to my YouTube channel, and in about five or ten minutes after I click stop broadcast, our conversation will be on on, uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, so, uh, uh, John, I want to I want to start this way. Tell me, uh, tell me, uh, how long have you been there, and and what are you doing? Okay, well, I just started with the company at the very end of October, like that last week, maybe two days before Halloween. And my job here is mainly, you know, negotiating debts for people. You know, they, clients come into us, they've got an exorbitant amount of debt that's past due, they're in over their heads, and we try to bring it so that do get the best deal we can for them. Okay. And what does that mean? You get the best deal. What if that best deal is not good enough? What does it mean, John? You know what, if I can't get within the parameters that we have set for ourselves, then let it sit for a little while, which unfortunately, it may the credit may take a hit on it, but at the same time, when it gets down the road, it's going to cost a lot less, and it'll be amicable for all parties involved. Okay, and when it gets down the road, is there a point where it goes too far? Is there a danger point? Um, sometimes that does happen, and sometimes that happens before we can even realize it. it you know, it's just kind of the way... Yeah, it's the nature of the beast, you can say. Okay, that beast. Describe that beast when the beast is angry and it ends up being a disaster. What is a client file that you open up and you just think, oh, shit? Well, I mean, it's not per se when you open something up. It's when something goes into litigation because, the, you know, for, for the people suing the clients, it's a slam dunk nine times out of ten because they breached. They didn't make their payment. So if right, it's going to go right. in front of a judge... You, you know, we're kind of bent over the barrel there. Okay. And it's going in as low as you can, explaining the hardships that the client has because, you know, these are some trying economic times we're going through right now. And although they are attorneys and whatnot on the other end, they're also human. So, you know, they, they will deal with you, but they don't have as much motivation to deal with you if it's just about to go to court. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, now, John, I've got... Uh, uh, these seven searches that were done on Bing this week, and these these got sent to Credit Card Debt Talk. So now, you know, it would just be awesome if somehow I had a crystal ball and I knew that someone was going to search for these things tomorrow, and so I could get an answer on this Hangout today, and tomorrow they would click on it and they would get their answer. It doesn't work like that. It'd be nice, right? <laughs> So instead, let's just assume we can manipulate the timeline and this person, you know, we got a little Harry Potter in this game. So uh, I'm going to say what they searched for and it got sent 
to Credit Card Debt Talk. What would you want that person to hear in Credit Card Debt Talk if they had typed this search? Are you ready? All right, give it to me. All right. I've got seven of them, and I'm only going to ask you one. So uh, they just typed Credit Card Debt Forgiveness. Four words, credit card debt forgiveness. What would you tell that person? What would you want that person to hear? Well, I mean, I would let them know that, you know, it's not, nine times out of ten is not going to get forgiven completely. There's, there's going to have to be some monetary contribution from that person to have it taken care of. Now, I'm not saying they'll have to pay the full amount, but they're going to have to come out of pocket. It's Right. It's you're financial hurt. professionals. You're not the Pope. I understand. Right. So say more, John. Um, what else would you like? I mean, that's kind of. Well, it. I mean, what do you, re read between the lines. What do you think they're looking for when they type "credit card debt forgiveness"? It's to me, it sounds like someone programmed them to well, say. I, what I think that you know, if they're typing that in, I honestly believe that they're trying to get it wiped out completely without coming out of pocket, and that's just not going to happen. Right, 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 right. So, if it's not going to happen, what is going to happen? What is going to happen is eventually that debt's going to be, be sold from their original creditor. Like, say they had a Best Buy card. That's going to get sold. That's going to get bought and sold several times, pennies on the dollar. And the further down the line it goes, especially with these smaller ones, the easier it is for them to make it less painful when they pay it off. But they're paying something. They're paying something. Right, right. So... Uh, John, uh, just tell me what it's like to work there. Is it you, you think it's a good business, and are clients getting what they expect? I, I definitely could say say that is a wonderful experience, and they're get they're getting beyond what they expect. What, what do you mean beyond? If they get out well, of debt, how can you? Well, I'm just saying, you know, they have a certain. You know, we usually give them certain quotes as they come in, and I know myself. I can normally go beyond what we quote them to begin with. Okay. So give me an example. What's a what's a what are the most challenging, most frustrated clients that you've had since you've been there? Most memorable, newsworthy. You know, it's been pretty smooth with all our clients. At least the ones that I am assigned specifically. I've really had no problems. Okay. I'm sorry that I don't have anything a little juicier for you, but that's just... Yeah, that's okay. Uh, all right, so now I'm going to transition to to a finish. Uh, John, I'm going to ask you... Uh, I, I, I want to try to describe who our audience is, and then what I'm going to do is say, okay, knowing that's the audience, what else do you want to say? So that's what I'm going to ask you, but let me first describe who this audience is. When Adam and I started Credit Card Debt Talk, again, we find that multiple voices, unscripted voices, um, and all the clumsiness of an amateur, um, unscripted conversation, uh, we're conditioned as consumers to think that polish is preferred. You know, because let's face it, CNN can't get up there and they can't look clumsy. they got to look professional and polished. So we program ourselves to say, wow, that's what people want to that's what they want. They want professionalism. They want polish. They don't want gaps. They don't want uh, uh, webcams that suddenly go to the ceiling. Uh, but, in, but in truth, they do. They have a large tolerance for it. And I, I have this sense that the more clumsy we are, the more they listen. So because of that, we've got uh, this thing is quite popular. People listen and listen for rel relatively long periods of time. Now, in addition to that, we have, in other words, what I'm trying to say, John, is part of the audience is just random clickers. They're just looking for interesting stuff. They've watched enough cats chase laser pointers on the carpet, and so now they turn their attention to us. Why not? And they listen to us. In addition to that, we have people that script kind of searches that I just read to you, and they are more on a specific hunt for specific answers. So those are the two audiences. With that said, John, what else do you want to say? What what would what do you think these people want to hear? Um, that you know, it's not the end of the world where they're at now. I mean, we're coming out of a very horrible recession. Everybody's in debt, so they're not alone in this. And with you know the right people, 
like ourselves, they can easily get out of it. Okay, good, good. So, John, uh, final question is, do you know who Chapo Guzman is? Ch oh, yeah. El Chapo? El Chapo. So, who do you think would be a better boss, Adam Strum or El Chapo? i got to go with Adam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. John, uh, it's been a pleasure. This is just great. I've, I've wanted to do this and, and uh, again, tell uh, Lydia how she can find it. That's how you can find it as well. It should be about 10 or 15 minutes. It'll be there automatically. And uh, that's all I have. Do you have anything else to say? Um, no, I believe that's all. All right. Just check with the boss. But I'm going to close this. And if someone comes back in and you want to add Robert, that's fine. But I got the impression he was going to skip. Yeah, he, he's got a full plate today. All right. Okay, John. Uh, uh, thanks and uh, ciao. Take care. All right. Take care, Tom. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye -bye. This has been Tom Duty, middle-aged American living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would type Howdy Duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search for my site. This uh, Adam Strom, whose voice was only there briefly, he has a dental injury, and he can speak. And, and uh, listeners, I've listened to him speak in the last 12 hours, and it's really painful listening to him. Here he comes. He sounds a little better. He sounds a little better today. Uh, Hold on. So, this, uh, so you're don't mean to interrupt you. All right. So you're you're back. I was just going to say who you were and do your contact info. I'm me. All right. Well, we're, contacted we're, by we're, phone. We're going very. We're we're treating you as a, a handicapped patient today with the dental injury. I am. Injury. I am because yeah, it is it is killing me. So uh, Adam is a founding partner of Financial Rescuers. His website is financialrescuers.com, and he's partnered with an attorney in Philadelphia. So I'm at, at the moment in New York City at the Sony building in Midtown, and Adam is in his office, in, which is the operation of the business in Tempe, Arizona. And a, 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 and a, a second very important component to the business, though relatively small in headcount, uh, is George Tedros, who's the attorney retained by financial rescuers, and he's in Philadelphia. That's where the business was uh, started. Adam moved to Arizona for personal reasons, and he has hired and trained his own staff. We heard Lydia and John today. By the way, they're great. <laughs> they're uh, you don't have to tell me. They went through rigorous uh, interviewing to become well, members. Well, I, I think if you you know sit at home and listen to the conversation we just had, I, as well, a boss... Tom, I do want to say that other members of our team will appear at um, future death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was just great. So, uh, all right, amigo. I have not a mask. All right, ciao. I am going to go ciao. and rinse my mouth with some warm salt water. <laughs> ciao, ciao, ciao. Adios. Ciao. Uh, Adam's uh, uh, phone is 866-516-1985. I, the early morning hours when it's even earlier in Arizona, I answer that phone. So that's the toll-free number for his office, answered on the East Coast by me for the two, first two hours of business each day, 9 to 11. Uh, that's Eastern Time. That's 866-516-1985. And the company website, again, is financialrescuers.com.